There we go. YouTube, it's me. Back again, I am on a roll. Quite proud of myself, to be honest. Today I'm going to make a video to describe something I have not seen carved out for you guys on other YouTube videos, so that's kind of nice. Now this won't be very clickbaity because I don't think it's a topic that gets searched that often, but what we're going to talk about is how to handle the day after a day where you've eaten too much. An example would be a 4th of July barbecue or a birthday party or Thanksgiving or wherever, somewhere where you ate too much, how do you damage control the next day? It's gonna be, I, I let's call it four steps, four ways to mitigate overeating. So without further ado, let's get it going. Make sure your home is insured. One of those days. Don't know how to explain it, but everything feels like a chore today. So if you guys are feeling that today too, it's not just me. I am just getting some gas. Then I'm heading home where we can finish talking about all the things I promised. But I gotta get out of this gas station parking lot first. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys at home. I hope you guys are enjoying the new camera because it's night and day quality difference here. So I'm very thankful to have spent the money to buy this thing because it's making these YouTubes a whole lot better for you guys and a whole lot better for me too. Now, before I even get out of the car, I just pulled up to the house, I was like, damn, I skipped step one before even realizing I skipped step one. Water. The day after eating too much, water is huge. It's huge because it's really gonna help get everything moving, help you feel like, you're, it's gonna help you with a lot of that water retention because of all the salt you ate. Um, so yeah, it's a very important critical part of this is making sure that you're hydrating. Now we're not talking about, you know, two, three, four gallons. Aim for a gallon. Aim for a solid gallon of water. Um, you'll be good, and that doesn't include other drinks you might be having throughout the day, like say you mix some amino acids or a protein with some water. We're not counting that, but just a strict, straight up wa uh, gallon of water. Now, I drink water out of a can because I try to avoid plastic, but it's a personal thing. Uh, to each their own with that one, I don't think it's gonna make the biggest difference over the course of your entire lifetime, but yeah, I just try to drink, well, I mean, it's better for, better for the environment, no, I'm not contributing to plastic too, but yeah, I try to drink canned water when I can find it. Uh, you know, no specific shout out to this brand, they're not paying me. You might have seen one of my funny commercials made for them as a joke, but yeah, I'm not paid by them still. So shout out if you guys have a plug at Liquid Death, but I'm drinking canned water, a gallon today, that's gonna be step number one. Now, before I get in and start talking about step number two, step number three, step number four, remember, these are gonna seem like simple tips. They're gonna seem like, hey, he's not really giving off like any special secrets that really make that big of a difference. The, the, the underlying theme here is that if you do these things, it will mitigate all of the problems from the day before and we'll get back on track and be heading in the proper direction. So it's not so much what I'm doing, it's also you need to notice what I'm not doing. So I'm not drying my body out, I'm not trying to dehydrate myself. Step one, gallon of water. Good, we good? All right, next one. I can't help but feel super lucky today because of the fact that it's like 70 degrees at the most is what it's going to get to today. 70, 71. It's beautiful. Um, and I know a lot of other parts of the country right now, it's like, it's like 110. So yeah, definitely grateful. Love living in the forest. Sometimes perspective is important. Uh, but today I am very well aware of the fact that where I'm at is very mild. There's a pile right here, if you guys can see this wood that I had to move. Um, this is milled from these trees. You can take a chainsaw and you can mill wood. I know, how crazy is that? So shout out to the fact that I'm going to, in the near future, start doing that on my TikTok, TikTok videos as well. <clears throat> Milling pieces of wood, turning them into tables, turning them into countertops, having fun with it, maybe auctioning off a table. Definitely lots of plans for the future of my content because of the fact that I'm never done 
with ideas. I just keep it moving. So yeah, that's gonna be exciting. Now, this is going to seem like the most obvious of obvious answers to your overeating issue the day before, but it's this. I'm going to do my cardio first, but I'm gonna do my cardio today. Um, take zero chances with missing it, but also, like I said, we are reading between the lines and understanding it's what you don't do. I will be getting moving, staying active. I'm about 25 to 30 minutes on my Stairmaster, but that's what I do every day. That's what I do every day. So it's not different, right? I'm just getting moving. So my, my implication here is that you should not be punishing yourself, counting how many calories you've burned, trying to elevate how much harder you work out today versus a typical day. You should work out hard. You should always work out hard when you're working out. You should do some cardio. You should really always have some cardio. Um, but it doesn't have to be structured cardio on a treadmill. It doesn't have to be structured cardio on a Stairmaster. You could just go for a walk with your dogs. Nice little 30 minute walk at a low intensity and that's still gonna do a lot for you, but get fucking moving without punishing yourself. So don't do like a ridiculous strenuous amount. That's actually gonna be extremely counterproductive because then the following day you'll be less likely to do as much and the following day after that and you're gonna go through this constant ebb and flow of effort, lack of effort, food, lack of food. We don't want that. The human body loves consistency. So one of the best things you can do the next day, yeah, get moving. One of the worst things you can do the next day, punish yourself by moving a ridiculous amount or trying to measure how many calories you've burnt. But anyway, I think you guys get the picture here. This is coming from, remember, it's not just Bradley Thor, the TikTok guy. This is coming from a former NCAA strength and conditioning coach in the division one sector of collegiate athletics. Uh, someone with a master's degree in exercise physiology. I am well aware of the fact that one of the best things you can do is get moving. Utilize some of that, those extra energy um, substrates you have throughout your system, but don't punish yourself. I'm telling you, don't. Uh, it's gonna really create a really weird relationship with you and food, and it's gonna throw everything out of whack. So again, there's my Stairmaster, my step mill, whatever. I think it's called a Stairmaster. Favorite cardio machine in the world, love it. I'll be using that today, but it'll also be a very active day for me. So, you know, keep that in mind. But yeah, I'll be doing that. Uh, so if you guys are out there, it's the day after overeating, do a little bit of cardio. It could be walking your dogs, remember that, but get something going, get your body moving. Uh, it's one of the best things you can do. Do not get out your Apple Watch and start measuring if you can burn a thousand calories at once. That's not gonna be enough anyway, so don't, don't do it that way. That's not the answer, all right? Remember, the goal isn't to burn off what we ate yesterday. The goal is to get moving, to be active. Um, that's how we're gonna mitigate yesterday's overeating. You're not gonna burn that all off, but you also, luckily, don't need to. Now, what I fear a lot of people think um, this video is, is a way to erase what you ate the day before. Um, you know, unfortunately, and fortunately, a little bit of damage, microscopic amount of damage is done when you overeat. It's just, it's the fact of the matter. A microscopic amount of fat storage will take place. But to be fair, and to be quite frank with you, it's not enough for you to notice, um, visually or physically. Any changes you've seen from one day to the next are um, either water retention from a lot of sodium, so a little puffiness around the body, or psychological. So we must be careful. And you know, one of the biggest reasons about me making this video is I fear so many people do punish themselves the day after a bad day of eating. Um, and they think that's somehow going to regulate things and level them out. It won't. And the major reason why I say that is because of this main point here. The day after a bad day of eating, you should not be changing your diet or your exercise. So hack number three, or rule number three, let's call it a rule. Rule number three, do not change your exercise routine. Um, do not change your eating. 
So we're gonna eat the same amount of macros we're supposed to eat every other day. For those of you who are following or a member of subscriber of my app, you have your macros so you know what you should be eating on a typical day. For the rest of you, if you never tracked macros, um, you can of course download my app, but the more important thing here is you should not be changing your behaviors of what you're eating because of what you ate the day before. And it's because throughout this journey, what we want is, is we want to be focusing on these performance goals of building muscle. And if you're training like you should be in the gym, challenging yourself, uh, a day of starvation, a day of not eating enough is only gonna hinder your performance, increase the risk of injury, put you in a position in the gym where you're not recovering enough. And the good news is, is when you eat a whole bunch too much, protein synthesis goes up, which is good. Uh, that is one good thing with that situation. The next day when you're about to go work out, you don't want to go not eat and then work out hard because protein synthesis is not going to just be up because you ate a shit ton the day before. It's not going to carry through for seven, eight days at a time because of that. So we're going to get right back on track and eat exactly what we're typically used to eating. So we're not going to punish ourselves. So again, a great day for me afterwards is leg day or back day because they're challenging days and I got all that extra glycogen. So I put it to use in a good workout and then I eat my normal macros. So rule number three, work out in the gym the exact way, go right back to your regimen, challenge yourself, have a great workout, have a robust, you know, challenging session. And along with that rule number three, also get right back on the plan with your eating and don't change anything. I know it sounds crazy. Well, I could just eat zero carbs that day. Please don't. We're not wanting to do this. You know, the name of the game here is consistency not just with behaviors, but also with, you know, a lot of these metabolic systems in our body. So that's it. That's rule number three. My leg day was brutal today. I just finished it, hence the outfit change. This is my second workout of the day, um, but it's not, it's not out of the usual for me. So I did a hard leg day. I did my morning cardio for the wake up. And now we're going to go talk about the last, that's right, the last rule, which is rule number four. And then I'll let you guys go. Sound good? Do me a favor while we're talking here, I always forget to ask, please smash that like button. I know sometimes I'll watch YouTube videos and I'll forget to like them. It helps me a ton. So smash that like button, maybe turn on notifications or subscribe and uh, I'll be quite grateful for that. Let me move on to the next thing, all right? I think I've introduced him on YouTube before. Maybe not, but this is Oliver. He is famously, um, you know, a really a goofball personality, but he shows up in a lot of my uh, TikToks and Instagram posts. My other favorite person in the world, I'm not gonna pick him up right now because he's not really vibing with it, but his name's Bobby. So it's Oliver and Bobby, those are my two dogs. Anyway, um, there he is for his cameo on YouTube for his first time. Right now we are gonna talk about the fourth rule and quite frankly, the least important, but I still want you to hear it because it's a tool I do like to use and it would feel very disingenuous of me not to share it because I do use it. But before I expose you to this, I need you to know this does not, does not change anything about the fat composition in your body. So there is no such thing as flat tummy tees that actually change anything about the fat composition in your body unless there's legitimate like amphetamines in whatever you're taking or uppers, uh, it's not going to do anything and you wouldn't want that in your body anyway. So let's talk about it. This is dandelion root tea. All this is going to affect in your body is just the water retention. Water retention can already be mitigated just by exercise and drinking enough water as it is, but this does help me expedite getting rid of some of that a little puffiness that you have the day after eating too much. Um, so this is dandelion root tea. You can find it in most grocery stores, if not all of them. The brand is typically a very healthy, like holistic brand you'll find it from. One box usually lasts me months, so you'll be fine. It's not super expensive. I think it's probably like $4.99 or something. Uh, but it's good to keep on hand because it helps you. It's really a natural diuretic. So it'll help you get rid of some of that excess water. Remember, important, drink enough water while you're using it. That's a big part of how this is all going to work. We're not trying to dehydrate ourselves. We're just trying to get rid of some of that retention. And then lastly, asparagus. I don't have any on hand right now, um, 
because it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it can help quite a bit. If you're dealing with a little bit of puffiness the day after, um, sort of a loosely unstructured day of eating to put it lightly, what will happen is you can add some asparagus to one or two of your meals and that asparagus will also help with the exact same thing. Now what I fear a lot of people heard is, is that dandelion root tea is going to help you lose fat. It's not. Don't take it that way. There is also no mechanism taking place that is detoxing your body. So I don't want to hear any of that, um, any of that witchcraft being tossed around. But the truth is, is that every once in a while throwing in some dandelion root tea once a week, once every 10 to 15 days, something like that can really help a lot. It also helps get things moving. We don't need to get too deep into that for gross reasons, but all of that can be quite helpful the day after eating too much. So before we finish today, let's, let's recap a little bit. Do not underestimate the power of just getting back on track. We are all, all going to have days, no matter how you know, strict you track, no matter how good of a job you do, we're all going to have days that are deserved where you don't track your meals. Um, whether it's 4th of July, like I said, a family bar barbecue you've been looking forward to for a month, uh, birthday parties, a, I mean, could be Christmas Eve or something. The key is, is to chain together as many good days in a row as you can, and then allow yourself some freedom sometimes. Uh, we're not trying to punish our body the day after we do something like that, and we're certainly also not trying to binge as much garbage as we can fit in our, you know, pile. So, it's that balance, right? You want to have a day where you're not thinking about tracking your food. I get it. It helps us all and I'm here for it. But also the day after it's important to have some protocols in place that help you get back on track. So I'll recap down here in the description rules one through four. Um, please again, I know it's, it's beating a dead horse here, but hammer that like button. I'll see you guys soon.